Hey guys, I got some questions about the Nixie tube device I picked up at an estate sale recently, so I thought I'd take a closer look at it in this video. So, it's a model 3500 from the Micro Measurements Corporation of Melrose Park, Illinois. We've got power, display, sensitivity, reset, inputs. And it says 56.4 here. No idea what that means. On the back, we've got a power connector and a fuse. I already unscrewed the power cable, which is a first for me. I've never seen a AC power cord quite like this before. There are two screws holding it in, in the back. I've taken those out, so I think the insides will slide out, huh? There we go. It was heavier than I expected. So, it is solid state, but uh, fairly primitive. <laughs> no integrated circuits, just one heck of a lot of transistors. And they look like a fairly early style of transistor, too. Let's see, they're RCA 2N404. And uh, I believe when you're talking about three digits after the 2N, that's a fairly early transistor. Later on, uh, four digits was a lot more common, like a 2N2222 or 3904. Don't see a date code though. This looks like UPYO3L. That doesn't mean anything to me. Back here we've got a couple power transformers stacked on top of each other. Maybe one's a filter choke. I'm not sure. And some ultralytic capacitors. And underneath, not a whole lot. Got some diodes. This must be a rectifier for the power supply. Looks like uh, maybe it's a thermistor. Maybe it's a safety cutoff device. If uh, there's excessive current draw, this might cut the juice to the set. And uh, there's the various controls. Well, it's military uh, control. Allen Bradley Type J. These are really high quality potentiometers. So, between this very military looking power connector and this military grade control, this might be or have been made for the military. Let's see if I can get one of these cards out so I can take a closer look at it. Let's see, there's some foam down here. Uh, hmm. well, I'll see if I can figure out how to get these out. I think what I have to do is remove a screw one down there and one at this end to get this L channel out of here and then the cards will slide out this way. I removed the front bezel which is quite filthy and that allowed me easier access to unscrew this and now I can slide the cards out. I have to be very careful not to mess up the order of these cards because they are not identical. So, this is far left, then next, then next. So, uh, like I was saying, these are fairly early transistors. I see a code of 340 on these, so that could be the 40th week of 1963. This has some diodes on it as well. These are germanium transistors, so this is pre-silicon transistor and these might be mica capacitors or they could be some type of uh, plastic like mylar and here is the Nixie tube it's a National Electronics NL6844A and you can see all the elements inside there, one for each digit, zero through nine. These drivers are kind of interesting. I've never seen a logo like that before. 
I guess it's uh, an embossed H. And uh, part numbers are odd. It says MHT4011311. Like there's three leads. They're probably transistors, but the it's not the standard numbering convention of 2N. So it kind of looks like it's silver plated. Oh, it's tarnished up there. I've seen gold plated circuit boards, but I never saw a silver plated board before. Hmm. the same as that more or less and so on so interesting little device don't know what I'll use with it but or don't know what I'll do with it or exactly what it is <laughs> uh, but uh, for now I'll keep it all intact I may eventually make a clock out of it but because it is working and it's all complete uh, for now I'm gonna leave it the way it is just, uh, just uh, I don't know <laughs> put it up on a shelf somewhere and power it up occasionally And finally, here's a look at it back together and powered up. I took some Windex and cleaned off the screen bezel so it's a lot clearer now. So I had mentioned that you can make a clock out of Nixie tubes. If you're interested in that, there are lots of websites out there. Just Google for Nixie tube clock and you'll find plenty of websites explaining exactly how to do it. And there are even some kits you can buy. Typically, they use a microcontroller to drive either a bunch of transistors, like they used in here, or there are some special integrated circuits made for driving Nixie tubes. It can be a little bit hard to find, though. I think one of them is the 7441. Each one of these segments needs something like 90 volts or maybe a little bit more, so you can't use standard TTL logic stuff. You need something that can handle a little bit higher voltage. But either way, transistors or those special circuits, uh, special chips, it's uh, a fairly simple task. And uh, definitely neat to look at. And if you want to go one step further, something else really cool you can hook up with these. So you can use two digits for the hours, two digits for the minutes, maybe two more for seconds. But if you want to do something even cooler, either for tenths of seconds or even for a seconds counter, you can use these guys. This is a Decatron decade counter. Made in England. It's still original in the box, it's never been used. It's a GC104B. If you hook these up the right way, you can actually make this spin. Uh, there's neon gas and you're just like the Nixie tubes. And each one of these little metallic elements will light up. Uh, I think just one lights up at a time and if you pulse it properly it'll spin around. I haven't tried hooking this up yet but one of these days I will. I think it'll be a fun little project. Well, that's it for this video. Hope you enjoyed a look at this Nixie tube device.